Hi, I'm Owen Vallis, professor of music technology at California Institute of the Arts. We're going to take a look at some of the different sound modules in blocks, part of the new Reactor 6. We've built some synths before with this, but today we're going to take a peek at the Monarch set. Monarch is a synth that Native Instruments makes, and it emulates sort of the mini Moog synth. In blocks, each of the parts of the Monarch were broken apart. So we have the oscillators, we have the filters, and we have the envelope. Let's take a look at the oscillators. Below in the structure view, we can see that we've put together a very basic synth. And in fact, let's hide the panel view for the moment. At this point, this should feel familiar. We have a note in. The note in is controlling the pitch for the three different oscillators. We have a mix block from the bento box, and that is going into the filter. The filter is being modulated by our Monarch envelope. We also added an LFO, which we haven't seen previously, and that's going to modulate the FM input on the filter. So the LFO is hooked into the FM input on the filter. And again, this is one of the powerful things with blocks is that there is no distinction between event and audio rate signals, meaning we can hook up modulators like LFOs into things that normally expect an audio rate signal like an oscillator. The output of this filter goes into our VCA, which again is our volume control, which we have a, another envelope. And this time we're using the delay instead of the reverb as our effect at the output. We're adding some additional modulation sources here with an LFO and a module we haven't seen yet, but allows us to process or change the way our modulation sources are being fed into these other blocks. Lastly, we're going to use the scope to allow us to see what our signal looks like. This can be very useful if you're trying to determine what an envelope does, what an LFO shape is, or as we're doing here, just what the shape of the audio is. What we're doing is passing the pitch into this scope so that the scope can sort of orient itself around the note we're currently playing. Let's go back to our panel view. In this video, we're going to take a look at the oscillators. Let's hear what this sounds like currently. One of the nice things about the Monarch is that we have legato control over our envelopes, meaning that if I hold down a note and then play the next one without releasing the first, certain things don't get re-triggered. And you can get sort of uh, an evolving sound where it can become more muted over time, and then you can hit each note independently, and this will change and make the sound brighter. So again, just to demonstrate that, versus holding the note, This allows for a lot of expressivity. With the oscillators here, in order to hear the oscillators better, I'm going to turn down the effect. I'm going to open up our filter, lessen the modulation source, try and get us more of a raw, dry signal. Let's hear what this sounds like. You'll notice up here that each of the oscillators has a different number. This is because in the Minimoog and in Monarch, there were three oscillators. And some of them had slightly different settings. You'll notice down here in the bottom right of each of them, I have a knob for selecting the different waveforms. And depending on which one I have selected, the waveforms are slightly different. For example, you can see here I have this kind of shark fin looking wave. But here on this last one, it looks much more like a sawtooth. In fact, it's a reverse sawtooth. If this one is a sawtooth, this one would be a ramp. Up at the top here, we have keyboard control, which just like we saw with the kick drum, disabling this keyboard control means that we have a fixed tuning for each of the oscillators. And no matter what note I play on the keyboard, the same note will always come out. This can be useful if you want to use, say, oscillator 3 as a modulation source. We can tune each of the oscillators individually. And we can add FM to each of them as well. 
Lastly, there's an octave knob for changing the octave associated when you play your note. Enabling the modulation input here shows us that we have the ability to modulate both the frequency control and the FM input. Once we have all three of these oscillators in our synth, we need a way to mix them or blend them together. We've seen this module before, but the bento box mix not only is a way to turn up and down individual volumes, but also allows us to invert the phase, and depending on whether we have relative or absolute selected, we'll try and compensate for how loud the signals are coming into the mixer. In relative, it'll try and turn down the overall volume so that nothing saturates. If I turn on absolute, you'll notice that there's this little lightning bolt. It essentially means we're gonna apply saturation if we hit the signal too hard. So let's hear what the difference sounds like. Here is all three oscillators turned all the way up with absolute on. And then with relative. This sound already has a lot of harmonics, so the saturation quality is not immediately apparent, but we should hear a difference in volume. Again, here's the relative sound, and here's the absolute. Especially if we send things like sine waves and that through this very loud, you'll hear sort of a saturation quality being applied. Up next, we'll take a look at how the envelopes work and how the filters work, and also take a look at how we can change the scope in order to get different views into our synth. If you want to learn more about Reactor, join us at cadenze.com, where we learn to build our own synths from scratch. And we'll look at primary and various techniques, all the way from subtractive synthesis to granular synthesis, and even creating our own FFT vocoder.